Hey guys, welcome back to Jurassic Collectibles. So, an update on my display. Uh, if you've been following my videos, you might have seen my Iron Studios uh, T-Rex review. If you haven't seen that, link is down below. But that's probably the biggest change to my display uh, at the moment in terms of the way it looks. Um, it kind of flows nicely on from my maquettes to this wonderful uh, centerpiece in the corner, the focus of the cabinet. Now since the last build I've been quite busy and I've managed to make this. It's a flat media storage unit, essentially just a set of wooden shelves and I made them from scratch. If you remember I bought some wood panels for the sides of my racking display and I used the same company to order sheets of wood uh, to build this. Uh, and I've also uh, stained the wood and finished it. Um, I've actually filmed the whole build on my phone, so later on in the video you'll be able to actually see the whole build process for this particular unit. But first I thought it would be really fun to embellish the Iron Studios T-Rex by adding uh, a banner like the one that falls down in the visitor center at the end of Jurassic Park when dinosaurs ruled the earth. I want to actually have that sort of banner in the same way draped across um, the T-Rex there as if it's falling to the ground just to really complete the look of this statue and I know it's not intended to be that moment from Jurassic Park but I just feel that would be a really nice embellishment and really complete the look of this corner. So first things first I just printed off this uh, when dinosaurs ruled the earth banner this was actually on um, the motorpool jurassic park motorpool website it's a file by adam mark so thank you adam mark you can find this as a pdf on their website the good thing is with this being a pdf file it's vector based so i can blow up uh, this image to any size that i need it to be uh, and then print it out at the correct size i just printed it off to get a feel for the actual dimensions of the banner um, and I can see that it's about 166 millimeters wide, just the size I printed it, and the height is about 16.5 millimeters. So that tells me that the height is roughly a tenth of uh, the width of the banner. So if I want to kind of blow that up in scale, um, I just need to remember that it's about 10 times as long as it is tall. Now, rather than just printing the banner on a piece of paper or adhering it to some sheet of plastic. I actually want to give the banner some texture as if it's made from real material. So I dug out this old uh, piece of um, white sheet. I actually used to use it for the tabletop for my old videos. Uh, so it's kind of uh, funny that it's coming round full circle to being used for another part of my display. Um, but I noticed that I've got this kind of nice sewn uh, hem along the edge and this was actually designed so that a metal pipe could go through the middle so you could hang it up uh, for photographic purposes but actually that serves quite nicely as the kind of right size for the banner so I'm going to go with this and I can also see some potential maybe to thread wire through the top now I've measured this end the height of what would be the banner when I cut it and uh, it's about seven and a half centimeters so I need about 75 centimeters altogether of length if we're going by that uh, one tenth of the height. Okay, so I've got my fabric scissors. Now I'm just gonna cut a bit more than I need just in case I need to make any corrections to this. And um, you know, I've got plenty of this stuff. Uh, so if I do go wrong, it doesn't really matter, but um, I'm just gonna do a rough first pass by cutting a little bit more than I need. So there's my future banner with a rough, rough, very rough cut along the bottom. Um, but that's fine because um, what I intend to do with this now is uh, first uh, wash it. So I've got to put it through the washing machine. And the reason why I'm going to wash it is because I want to use iron on transfer paper. And iron on transfer paper allows you to put any kind of design on t-shirts, flags, banners, whatever. Um, but you need to have clean fabric to start off with and sometimes oils or dirt can get caught up uh, in the fabric over time and it actually stops the transfer paper from adhering. Okay, so we're on to Photoshop. 
and um, I've brought in the PDF file for the banner and um, the actual transfer paper I'm using is A4 size so I won't be able to fit the entire banner on one piece of iron-on transfer paper. So um, here's the PDF brought in at the right scale so 75 centimeters long. Now you can see instantly that it chops off in the middle of dinosaur there. So what I'm thinking is I'm actually going to increase the canvas size to 75 centimeters in width. I'm just going to zoom out and I'm going to pop this in the middle roughly. Okay so what I'm going to do here is chop the banner up into sections and I'm going to make sure that wherever I chop it there's a bit of black so that um, if I do have to overlap the iron-on transfer it's only going to be on a black part it's not going to be on a, a really fussy area where you might notice that the, the letter isn't quite lining up because I'm going to have to iron them on in sections so let's just take this section first I'm going to cut that I'm going to get a new A4 paper piece of paper here we go landscape create and this will be my first iron on transfer and then I'm going to do dinosaurs and I'll have separate pages that I can print out and you can see I've actually managed to fit these three pieces onto one piece of A4 paper so I only need to use two pieces of transfer paper, paper in total um, now there's a couple things I need to do first of all I want to eliminate uh, this black border because I'm going to be transferring onto a white piece of fabric I won't actually need this edge so I'm just going to fill those in with white uh, and then there's one last step I need to do which is to flip the image because once I iron onto the fabric it'll be the inverse of the image so I need to make sure that um, I've flipped horizontally the, um, the stuff I'm going to print. So I'm going to save that and save that one and now I'm ready to print. You can use any inkjet printer to print to iron-on transfer paper. So I'm going to be using my Canon here. Okay so there we go, a nice crisp backward dinosaur. Now i just got to print the other half. Okay with the second half done I think these are looking really great already. Just that combination of black, yellow and red is getting me really excited. So what I want to do now is actually trim out each of these using a craft knife. I want to be really precise because they've got to line up uh, when I iron these. Um, it's okay if I leave a little bit more white so I'm going to sort of err on the side of it being having a little edge of white because once you actually iron that on any white parts will just you know, be essentially transparent. Um, but the actual inkjet parts are the, are the bits that will actually remain. Okay, so that's all the pieces cut out now. And uh, I'm thinking about what I'm actually going to do at this point. Probably what I'm going to do is masking tape these together on the backs like this so that when I actually lay them down on the piece of fabric and do the iron on transfer I can do it all in one go and I can also ensure that they're connected exactly how I want them to connect uh, before I iron them on so I think that's probably the way to go Okay, so there we have the complete banner, masking taped and ready for iron-on transfers. Okay, so the fabric has now come out of the washing machine and I've dried it. Uh, you can see the edges where I've cut it have become really frayed, so I'm glad that I cut a bit of excess because I can cut that off neatly uh, when I'm done with this process. And um, you'll see that I've uh, clipped it to a piece of cardboard um, that's part of the instructions when you do these iron-on transfers to put it on a hard surface. It says specifically not an ironing board. So, and I've also put a cutting mat underneath just to give it a bit more uh, surface rigidity underneath because this table is kind of a little bit padded. And then um, I've got the when the dinosaurs ruled the earth banner transfer that will simply go face down 
on the fabric and I'll have to do some lining up before I iron it. And then here I've got the trusty iron. You have to make sure that the steam setting is set to off and then you have to get it really hot. So let's get going. All right, there we go. So it's come out pretty good. Um, I can see there's some areas where the fabric has permeated through the print, but actually I kind of like it. It's given it sort of like, um, like a slightly weathered look. And um, yeah, I'd say the only parts that I need to sort out now are these lines where I'd hoped that with the heat these would kind of join together but you can see there's just a little bit of separation between um, the areas where obviously I had the edges of the pieces of paper. Okay so off camera uh, I just painted in uh, over the seams with some acrylic paint. I mixed some white and some black together until it roughly matched uh, the same colour as the transfer and then just daubed it on. You can still make them out but with the kind of um, sort of weathered look of the transfer process, I think it all sort of blends in okay and, and will look all right in the end. So I've also got some uh, garden wire here. Uh, it's quite rigid um, and I've uh, measured out sort of a, a length of wire that's about the same size as the banner here. And I've left a little bit of excess on the end because I'm gonna use that to make some sort of attachment or base um, for the bottom of the banner Something else I've done is I just folded over the end of the banner and glued it on that side with some PVA which closes off this open seam and leaves me with one open seam on this side and that's useful because I'm going to be feeding in the wire here to give it rigidity and hopefully the wire will sort of make it look like the banner is falling down when actually it's supported from its base. Now I folded over the end of the wire because it has a a sharp end and I want it to be fairly blunt because I'm going to feed it in and then have uh, the end of it butting up against the inside of the banner where I've actually glued and folded it over. Okay so let's feed in this wire. I'll just turn the banner around. There we go. And you'll see that this instantly gives the banner some rigidity and you can kind of see that it's already being held up. Okay, so I've printed off some reference from the film. For some reason it's come out ridiculously dark, but I can actually make out the shape uh, of the banner and I'm just gonna start forming it with the wire here. And now I'm actually going to remove the actual banner itself, making sure I remember which way is up. Now what I'm going to do here is coat the banner in PVA glue and, uh, and then I'm going to slide it back onto the wire to leave it to dry. And what that will do is it will give the banner rigidity and it will give it sort of like a, a nice uh, semi-gloss finish. Now before I do this I want to trim this edge because it's going to be trickier to trim it when it's all kind of wrinkled uh, on the wire. Okay, so that's now all trimmed. So the next stage is to coat this thing in PVA glue and I'm gonna start on the reverse side. Just gonna pour on the PVA glue. And if you followed my display build, you'll remember that I use a little handy roller to uh, spread out the glue. If you haven't seen my display build, check it out. Links are down below. So let's take the wire. Remembering that we've already decided where the up is. Okay, let's just make sure that's all stuck. 
sticking to the wire. Okay, good. Okay, so there's the banner fed onto the wire and I'm pretty pleased with the animated look uh, now that I've fed that onto uh, the wire. I'm just gonna leave that now to dry, um, probably overnight. Um, it is quite heavy, so I can see that it's trying to weigh down the wire, so I'm just gonna keep an eye on this. Um, but yeah, hopefully that should dry really nicely and retain this animated look. Where the glue has pulled a little bit and it's white, that doesn't matter. The PVA is going to dry clear and if anything it's going to give some variation uh, to the kind of texture of the uh, banner itself. All I've got to do now is leave this to dry overnight. Okay, 24 hours later and um, I've left this to dry and uh, it's now uh, pretty good. Um, it's still a little bit flexible if you really wanted to bend it, um, but that's rigid enough uh, for me to display it. And it does look like the uh, banner is actually kind of mid falling down. It's got enough creases and folds in it uh, to convince me that it looks like it's kind of floating through the air. So I'm really pleased with that. The only thing I've got to work out now is how to weigh down the base. At the moment I've just got some spare wire. I think what I might do is buy one of those one, two, three blocks you might have seen uh, in my earlier display videos um, that I used to weigh down my maquettes. It's just a metal block essentially uh, that's used for measuring and making right angles but they're also quite weighty. So I think I'll use one of those to weigh this down. Uh, in the meantime I'm just going to use uh, this masking tape uh, just to roughly place it and show you how it looks with my own studio's Rex. And there we go, that is the completed banner in place. Um, unfortunately the masking tape is off to one side and I'll replace that with uh, as I said, the one, two, three blocks when that arrives. Um, it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with this. Um, the main thing I don't like is the finish. At the moment, it's too glossy for my taste. So I'm actually gonna order some um, matte clear coat so that I can uh, actually matte down the banner and make it feel a little bit more like fabric because it has some nice surface details that are being sort of blown out by how uh, shiny it is. But um, apart from that, yeah, it came out really well. I'm, I'm pleased with the form and I'm pleased with the actual transfer of the banners. The colour looks really bold. So uh, yeah, I think this is a successful project and I hope you enjoyed uh, joining me on this journey. And next, here's a quick run through of my flat storage area and how I built it uh, from scratch.
Cena for a 